I'm Jeremy, and uh, this is the White Elephant, also the Rome for Wild, the 99 Chevy 6.5 turbo diesel 3500 express van i'd been searching for years and then um eventually somebody said you're never going to do that and about a week later i bought the bus but i uh found the bus i was really particular with what i wanted i wanted the short bus four windows in length and this one was from arizona originally somebody bought it lived about a month or two in colorado drove back to massachusetts so having a bus from below the salt belt was a pretty big part for me with the uh, undercarriage and not having rust or anything like that. Uh, welcome to the inside of the bus. I guess first off, probably shouldn't be showing you this, but this is the little secret cabinet there. The couch, just use a Siberian cooler underneath. There's a pipe that drains, uh, so any melted water that ice goes right out, keeps the ice a lot longer. It works great. Uh, I've been getting like 10 days of ice. I mean, by the time it's getting low, I'm putting another bag in. I've had no issues with it. I find, honestly, I use it less and less. It's practically a beer cooler for the most part. But yeah, I researched a lot online and when looking for uh, coolers, there was a couple review pages and this one with the Yetis were pretty much the top of the line. I felt like just visually, this one out of their reviews looked like it had a little more ice out of it. Right side's just storage. Uh, this was a little cutout so I could slide a table in and out. I bought this table at Home Goods. Didn't like the top. Found this cheese cutting board. Put it right on. Give it a little more character. Mostly coffee, but uh, you know, like just sliding out, then it just becomes, you know, a computer table for the laptop. Overall, it's like perfect because it doesn't slide anywhere, something I don't have to worry about. But aside from that, kind of would be nice to, you know, have some sort of way I could lock it into place somewhere else because it would just be nice just to be able to like lay down on the couch without having to, you know, it's little things, not a big deal. So this is all um, stained oak around the trim. This is not oak. This is, uh, I believe it's poplar wood, but for the majority of the bus, uh, the building was from Ed LeClaire Carpentry out of New Hampshire and me and him both did like the roof together most of the build together uh he did a lot of the framing work and the couch especially helped me on that one like little details like the angle cuts and such like that but yeah the trim was just just trying to match um actually this was stained later to match this but i wanted it all to kind of go together with just the white and wood look keep it clean but it still get enough light in here so this is uh there's just a clip here that just drilled right in and then this whole bar just pops into these clips that are each one um, as they go down. It works pretty well. Uh, these are a little like tough, like that one slides great. Sometimes it's like, you know, just catching. Um, not a big deal again, but overall I wish I had done, you know, maybe an inch or two longer on the curtains and did a bar like I did in the back, which is just a copper pipe that goes across and then feed, you know, how it's back there. The only issue I've had is when the windows are down and I don't think about it when I'm driving, which is nice to have the windows down to get some more flow in here. And then these get sucked out and these aren't that strong. So I've been close to losing a curtain or two. This uh, tinting that they used does pretty well. I don't get that much heat out of these i do get some heat off the back ones but i have had no issues uh opening and closing is easy there was no water leaks the only thing i thought about doing and never did was just like you know putting a piece of wood through each one of these but just kind of like left it as is and keep it give it a little bit of that original bus feel so it's not just too much like you know your typical almost house window or something so the cushions were just home goods. Uh, tried to keep all of like a natural uh, theme and that was kind of it. I'm all about the earth tones for my decorating. <laughs> so this shelf up here was built a couple weeks ago down in Florida. I was actually getting a little frustrated that I didn't have any plants in here. Something I really wanted, small space, don't know where to put them. So I just uh, figured that shoot over to Home Depot and uh, just built a little extra shelf here just to throw one plant up. So that was literally my project for the day to get a plant there <laughs> and get one over here. So I started this uh, bus trip with two people and before leaving, I was like, I'm gonna need more space for clothes and storage like that. So this one I built myself and that's where you can see there's a lot of imperfections aside from my carpenters over here that was perfect. 
um, but it ended up being a food storage on this side and then just some you know pajama type stuff something i need to get to quick when it's a cold morning um overall i could easily like, clean this stuff out hardly even need the space i mean this one's nice to have but i got more stuff than i need in here already when i'm bouncing around if i'm trying to like uh get up like a hill that's a dirt road and really bumpy uh these will you know give me that but um if the magnets didn't work too well that's something i might switch out that's something that this clips into but so far hasn't really done that much um, i can do a bungee cord from this one to that one and that seems to do enough eventually i'll probably get around to something that fastens it a little bit more these ones are also about like four inches wider than the ones over here which is a massive massive difference uh if i could i would 100% make them equal. I'm happy with how it is, but that side being the size it is, I think it's eight inches over there and I think you got 12 here. It makes all the difference in the world of how much it can fit in there, especially when it comes down to every inch. So with the bed, um, I had like blueprints drawn up of this size bus. I knew this was the bus I wanted. Um, so before buying it, while I was searching, like I was drawing up the plans down to the inches. What's going to make the most sense to me? How much room do I really need? You know putting a line on my bed basically at home this is where i'm gonna be can't go past this line <laughs> like is it gonna be comfortable should have gave myself a couple more inches it's a little tight especially with him this thing uh was one thing i thought about cutting down i liked the enclosure feel it kind of originally i had two of these both sides that kind of gave it its own private bedroom then i ended up liking a little bit more open took them both down put one back up thought about cutting this right off to the level of like the back couch here because that way you know my legs anything like that's just a little more room that the dog anything can slide off or he can get up on the couch this is a sh for extra shoes but it's a way for him to get up here um what i did with the mattress this is just a memory foam mattress from amazon super cheap super comfortable and just with like a bread knife cut it to the exact size let it come out here a little bit so it gives me a little extra room but it's pretty comfortable somebody doesn't complain <laughs> so with the back door i swing that open all the time if i got a nice view or by the beach anything that's just i love having it there i've gone to sleep with it wide open dog loves it during the day he's just sitting watching out doesn't go anywhere it's also a lot better to have it open with the heat because that's really the only thing that if it's in direct sunlight i'm getting some heat through there it's really well tinted um can't really see in at all but the uh the curtains do a little bit i do wish i had something that somehow blocked that heat that could be probably the worst part of the heat coming into this bus is back there um, so if i can have that door open all night or you know even for the day it's a massive difference i usually leave those curtains just like that it just makes it only reason those are usually not tied up is it it really kind of separates the bus for me it gives me a little bit of a feel of a separate room when you're in such a small space you know it's like the bedroom the living room the kitchen you're all in one space but it's nice to kind of break it up and that's how i kind of go about leaving the curtains it's just uh my carpenter did this he had this in his um twin bed i think he had like a day bed and he built this setup for that and the site he showed me it was like this might go well so these can just you know slide left and right there's just like i got a blow up paddle board back there so mostly i can't get to any of the stuff this way unless i rearrange it just a portable shower that's an amazing paddle board i was uh helped out by my buddy dave at, who owns cinnamon rainbows back in uh new hampshire on hampton beach and i've i can take he's 110 pounds me and him go on it together no issues i could just it rides so great like i don't even know if i'll ever buy a regular paddle board again after that one um, the only thing i haven't been able to do is surf on it, it seems a little little wobbly but uh under here is my goal zero 1400 watts that connects to 200 watt solar panel up top i've never dropped below around probably 60 percent was the lowest i've ever got that's charging all my camera gear my you know having my um, laptop charging the only thing that eats it up is a double fan that i can put in the windows and i only had maybe a couple days in florida where it's just super hot and i want to suck the heat out 
that thing was running like 65 watts or so an hour and i had it going all night and that was like the only thing that really killed me but it doesn't take long and this thing's full again i'm at 100 percent right now just because this is on its output is five watts for a lamp over here that's about it i also found another mini fan that goes usually for the front of buses or just rvs or anything and it ends up pulling like four watts so now i just use that one so with goal zero it's it's expensive and but it's it's worth it for me like the work wise it was so simple you know you just have your one battery bank your one cord that goes up to your solar panels and you're done the other perk about it is you know if you ever sell the bus down the road you can take that with you you know it just comes right out and you might save a good amount of money on doing a whole deep cycle conversion but it also comes down to what you need and since i needed so little this was perfect for me i have a backup deep cycle little setup over here but overall like i could have this forever and just move it from van to van or whatever i bus build they do next and then there's just a uh, little toolbox there that like if anything goes wrong that's right there for a little drill and some stuff and that has definitely become come in handy i've probably pulled out that little toolbox about a dozen times in the past couple months just from the littlest things screw coming loose um mostly this cabinet which i think i got under control but get into that in a minute i guess above the bed here is like a little wood burning uh thing i did just for fun my mistake was i made it out of oak to match the rest of the bus it takes forever to burn into hardwood should have done pine and stained it uh, but there's a little light that's actually a solar light so those stars that are at the top as soon as it gets dark enough they come out so it's almost like the stars are coming out at night and it's like a little two to three hour night light as it gets dark in here over to the kitchen just have a four watt light bulb in here it has a little usb charger here it's on yep. diffuser little like mint plant in my stove here. Try doing everything away from the bed. If you're gonna like be chopping stuff you're here, but that way there's no like splashing water next to the bed, no flames next to the bed, no flames next to the wall. So this one needed to be centered. And overall it's like worked out perfect. If I could do anything different, I probably would have shaved off an inch off this and work some little different setup, shaving off a couple inches here and there just to get that extra couple inches on the bed. But it's been working out pretty good. Uh, so the countertop I got at a lumber yard kind of slash farm. They had a bunch of live edge pieces. This was the biggest one I could find. I think I got a 12 footer and it still wasn't wide enough. So I actually, it's difficult to see it pieced in pretty well, but cut about four and a half inches off the back here. And then there's like six or eight inch long screws that go all the way in plus wood glue that made this to fit the length I needed, which is around like 24 to 26 inches, depending on where you are. This actually was a huge headache. I tried doing the epoxy first timer and that wasn't fun. I wanted that nice like glass look to it. I actually ended up liking this better, but I screwed that up. I tried doing it again, screwed it up again, and then spent like two hours just sanding that stuff off, starting all over. Uh, but if we go down to the cabinets, this side here is just kind of like cooking. You know, we got a little shelf up there. The propane goes back underneath the bed to the far corner, so it's easy to get out the back. There's not too much in here, just you know, your little stuff up here for cooking and a couple extra propane things so if this runs out on the road i can instantly like i can use my uh, sort of portable stove that i have a mini one under there and then i have an outdoor one over there and i can just use a couple of the little guys until i get that refilled under here is just like you know, your, your water seven gallon trash this was probably the only thing that's been going wrong is when I'm driving, the magnets were strong enough and this would just swing open too hard. And when it hit, it actually split all this area right here to the point I thought it was gonna rip off. So now I just got a little string there. Even when I was opening it, letting it go, I'm on a decline. And now the string just catches it so it doesn't further that issue. Put it through a couple screws in the back, some wood glue and it seems to be holding on. This is just a little extra so that it doesn't pop open. 
Uh, so with the sink, I only have a seven gallon uh, tank under there. I have in the bottom part of the closet, two more three gallons each. So it's another six under there. And then I have three one gallons there. The three one gallons are usually, you know, drinking water that I give just for the dog for the most part. Um, or filling up the pot, the seven gallons I use just for cleaning dishes. Um, I found that I honestly don't use much water at all cleaning the dishes. I'll, you know, pump it like, I don't know, four times or so, put in the soap, wash the dish, that water goes into the next dish, into the pot, constantly cleaning with that soap. Then I'll do a couple four more and re-clean again, but I've come down to like a little system where I really don't need that much water. Every time I have a chance to put more water in, I do. I've never gotten this seven gallon below probably, I think I had maybe two or three gallons left in it and that was the lowest I've ever gotten. Little spice rack here, mostly for the aesthetic, but I do use it sometimes. I'm not a big cooker. I don't like doing dishes. So that part is also easy if you're a big foodie. You might want a bigger water tank for cleaning the dishes. I really don't need that much. I found ways around it with simpler ways, but a uh, little basket here. This went in and then it went out and then it went back in. I had uh, bananas and apples, I think in there. Bananas were the wrong food to have in there. This thing swings. I don't realize they've gone bad and it was just like banana juice all down the window. I don't like banana juice. He had so many flies in here. It's, oh, it's brutal. So now it's just avocados. If they start going bad, they're out. Um, but avocado toast is kind of the number one meal now in the morning. Uh, so the top storage is just for more food. Not too much in here. As I said, I don't eat too much, but just some trail mix, multivitamins and peanut butter and jelly, the essentials. I've got plenty of room if I need to add stuff because mostly everything fits into that larger one on this side. We've got everything. Annie's mac and cheese all day, every day. That's it. I guess if we come to this section, so this used to be the bathroom. There was, if you look down at the floor here, little line cutouts. So down by the bottom, this wall actually came all the way out to here, just even with this. There was a door here and there was a little like, white box basically looked just like one of these cabinets and the toilet seat was on top of it. It was just all white. Underneath was your bucket for composting. There's also a urine diverter and went down into a separate tank where you could flip a switch if you were over like right land or anything like that or dump it or you could just take it right out and dump it somewhere else. I did my first like test run in the bus up to Newfoundland, went up to New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, took the six hour ferry to Newfoundland and did not use the bathroom once. Went out, used the woods, find a place, just did not find that uh, needed. It became a storage compartment for my camera gear. So I figured if it's gonna be for the camera gear and not actually getting used, I might as well rip it out and make something for my camera gear. So I open up this, this is just, you know, little things here and there. Um, there's some batteries. It's the miscellaneous drawer that's already getting packed full. And then this is for the dog, water, food bowl. And you can lift it up and take it all the way out and get the food underneath treats. It originally, because this was the bathroom. This was actually at the front. And then I had this here for my water next to the driver's seat. So that's why that hole's right there. And then every once in a while, sometimes if I have a bottle of water, I can put it in there as just like a little extra source to fill up for him. Second part, camera gear, easy access. That was probably my biggest problem driving through Newfoundland. Needed to pull over every two seconds. It's like, I need to take a picture of this, that. If a moose walks out in the middle of the road, need the camera. So needed to have something that I can just jump back, grab my camera gear, because it was all like stuffed in I don't know, one of these closets somewhere, or it was in this, in my backpack, how to open, just needed a quick access. Top one uh, right now, it's just a little bit miscellaneous, but that's where the dirty clothes go. I usually have my hamper, hamper's in there, it's half full. Or I like, 
you know, throw the hamper underneath the bed, stuff it back there just so I have like extra room, extra bathroom stuff. Most of the bathroom stuff like showering and stuff, I leave in my backpack with the towel in the back since I really only need it when I'm out of place to have a shower. Campground Planet Fitness is my number one place. But yeah, I just leave everything in there instead of putting it back and forth. There's really no point since there's no shower in here. Uh, it definitely hasn't been very difficult. There'll be, honestly, it's just not, doesn't feel that needed to do it so often. That seems to be a big problem like most people have with wanting to do this life. Well, how do you shower? And it's like, well, how often do you need to shower is more of the question. You know, if I can get one in like every five days, that's fine. It was, sometimes I'll get them in every like two or three. It's, you know, but if I don't have one, I'm okay with it. Not that big of a deal. You got the wet wipes if you really need to. All right, so uh, over here was just a piece of driftwood. Need to wrap this back up, but mostly just for the aesthetic and hang a hat or something on. And then I ended up putting some more things up. Had a ukulele at home, decided not to take it. Ran into somebody who had one, needed to go buy another one. Just, just need to have it. every van life or bus life or need the ukulele. Uh, this is the closet for all the main clothes I have like in that back side there I had some of the underwear and socks and on the left side was my pajama like need to grab something warm in the morning but overall all my clothes just fit into these little bins so if I got long sleeve shirts if it's hot out then in the back I can grab a different bin that's got t-shirts or something and just switch them out based off the temperature I'm in all the jackets and stuff like that go on the right side of the couch but so far I've only needed to pull out the jacket about one day since I left. Um, fits pretty well. Water's on the bottom. Overall I have way more clothes than I need in this little space. Wear about 10 of them. So This curtain has made one of the biggest differences in this whole bus. Um, my favorite part about it really is just that when I'm stepped all the way back and I don't see the driver's seat, it feels much more of a home in here, almost like a little hallway coming up the stairs into your house where you don't even notice that you're in a car and it's just a much better feeling being in here. This is the thermal curtain, um, blocks out all the light and the heat. I get a ton of heat through the windshield. I don't have AC in the bus. I don't have AC in the dash and that's just a massive difference. You know, even if I'm driving and it's a hundred degrees, I can close this. I know the dog's back here. As soon as I step back here, it's like I just stepped into 70 or 60 degrees. It's so much colder. Open it up. Got an extra dog back bed for him. He got injured a few weeks ago, so couldn't make it up there. Back on meds and um, on CBD, so he's been better and enjoying the big bed. But he's down here for the past month for some reason. He used to be back there. Now he's every time I turn up the engine, he's got to be right on my heads on my lap. So need to get him a little dog bed, ripped out the radio, wanted more storage there just for some quick stuff. Like my little camera that I can pull out threw in the Marshall speaker. This thing works great. Little inverter that charges it. I can turn that on whenever so I get like 10 hours out of the speaker each charge. Aside from that, decided about four days ago that a bathroom was going to be a little useful. So I got one of those Walmart pop-up toilets and just threw this thing Velcro to it so you can't really see it. But underneath those blankets, just slides right out. It's got a bag, that's about it. Throw away the bag in a couple days or however many times you can get use out of it. But um, coffee and baking soda seem to do the trick. Gave it a test run, no smell. I was like, I'm golden. We got a bathroom now. <laughs> I've been uh, collecting things here and there, I try not to get too much stuff, but you know, I met, ran into somebody at an art gallery, gave me this hat, stayed in contact with her, ran into a guy who owned a surf shop, gave me this hat, stayed in contact with him, some bus life people, uh, Amanda from Art Van Grove gave me this, just kind of coming together as a home and people giving a couple things here and there that end up fitting in place. And other than that, got my longboard that's as soon as I put it here and took it out from the back, it gets used all the time. Probably my favorite uh, side transportation, but that's about it. All right, uh, back of the bus. 
working on my sticker collection. Put these on before leaving DSWT Oceana. Uh, just a couple of foundations that I respect a lot and uh, try and give back to here and there. Uh, pretty packed full, but we have like a little Everest outdoor grill, um, beach chair, blow up paddle board, fan, tennis racket. Just about everything's back here. It's three hammocks, I don't know why, but there's three. Tent, sleeping bag, propane tanks over there. Got my life jacket, got his life jacket. Endless stuff back here, a full bag of winter clothes. I could probably clean out about half of this if I needed some more room, but so far it's working out. I did the bed this height so that the top of the mattress, I wanted that full window um, to look out of. Essentially, it's not that big of a, necessity I guess I I could have had the bed higher and when you have the door open it would still be nice but there's also times I'm like I wish the bed was down here and the doors open and you just got a bigger window but I thought that was a nice space with it open that was more of more important to me than the storage the big thing was that the height was just perfect for a propane tank to be under here aside from that nothing is going to be really big enough that you need it to be bigger so well, this was like from the old SUV in the back trunk, so I just left that there just in case I had was going to do some like water cooler or something, I don't know, cooking thing or cooking right there, but might even do some like slide out table back here. Still like a lot of options that I could do with this full setup. Water up to the roof is just your standard house aluminum ladder. All these dents here weren't me. That was before me. I know how to drive the bus. The only thing that happened with this ladder is actually I was getting an oil change. The guy directing me out was like, yeah, you're all set. Just go right out. Heard a big crash. Told me I was all set. Got home and this ladder was just mashed off to the side. Luckily it saved me like 150 bucks with all the oil and stuff like that because uh, they credited it back and I still have the other half of my ladder that I just spray painted and Popped up a couple screws and no problem. I've had like a 240 pound guy go up there just to see and no issue. Uh, yeah, so this is the roof deck. Um, I figured out how I wanted to do the setup on uh, schoolie.net and I think it was Magic Fool Bus that had a post there. It's M A J I K Fool Bus. Hopefully I got that right, but um, just did self tappers in the side with these uh, brackets that I got up on the Evo wood goes on the side there, beam cut, cuts across each one. There's also a four by four beam down the center below this. Um, I did that to raise it. My original plan was I'm gonna throw surfboards underneath it and save the space and save it from being on top of the solar panels. It was just like, didn't really feel like I'm gonna bring my surfboards. How often am I gonna use it? Then the paddle board just didn't fit by like an inch. So um, I guess they're gonna stay, I guess it's a little bit higher up about it but and it's also very secure having these go down the middle um, each one with that one beam plus they're I think they're four inch screws each one heavy duty so I don't think it's going anywhere uh, 200 watt solar panel that's the briefcase so if I was to take this off I can actually just stand it up on the out on a field keep it forever a couple like eye hooks in the corners in case you wanted to string a hammock off to it or just a line to dry your clothes or something like that built it mostly for taking pictures or just like hanging out up here haven't used it that much but I was planning to uh, basically do what you said hopefully uh, copy it out a little bit when I get to Yosemite and, uh, the only issue I've had was I was taking pictures up here of the stars not that long ago and my dog will just decide he wants to move a little bit and the whole bus is moving so it ended up not being the best best thing for nighttime photography but still enjoy it up here and get a little bit better view. Alright. Uh, so this bus gets around 11.3 miles per gallon. Um, not very good, but driving wise, because it's a 6.3 turbo diesel, just that for kicks, I got it up to about 93 miles an hour. And I can drive fairly comfortably at around like 78, um, but usually cruising these open roads, I find myself around 60 just enjoying it. So 
it's a comfortable ride. I uh, have no issue getting onto the highway or anything like that. Parking wise, it's like, I think it's 18 feet in length, so it's a legal car to be in a legal parking spot. I have no issues there. Aside from that, there's not much. It has no AC in the dash. It does have new heat. In the morning, it's kind of nice if you go to move. It cranks pretty quick. Uh, not having AC is a little tough. That's probably the deal breaker if I did this again. I, after being in the space, I think a Sprinter van would be the next bet, but I bought this bus for $4,000 and Sprinter might used with the mileage might be 25,000 to start. My money, everything all together, every drop into the deck, solar, stuff like that, probably right around 20,000, maybe 18. So it's a good deal. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the bus tour and uh, I hope it helps anybody that's starting theirs. Um, I highly recommend this. Huge advocate for exploring and um, just getting out there, voting greener, more appreciation for the environment, wildlife. That's basically why I'm doing it. I'm hoping that down the road as I'm filming this whole trip, the scenic places, photographing wildlife, uh, that a film might come out. The name will be Rome for Wild. So that's my Instagram, that's my website. Aside from that, yeah, appreciate you. Thanks. Those links will be uh, down below. Thank you.